Leonard Miller might be the weirdest pick of the 2023 NBA draft. I just got back from Vegas where I got to catch some of the NBA Summer League. And one of my favorite players to watch while I was there is Leonard Miller. And it's because he's such a unique player, largely due to the fact that he underwent a massive growth spurt when he was originally playing basketball as a guard. And now he's a six foot 10 power forward with a seven foot two wingspan. Although Miller ended up getting selected with the 33rd overall pick by the Timberwolves, he was consistently being mocked in the first round anywhere from the 25th fifth overall pick all the way up to the lottery. So you can understand that it was a pretty big surprise when he fell all the way to the second round at the 33rd pick. To be fair, Miller wasn't the best known prospect in the world heading into the draft. He was playing for the G League Ignite next to Scoot Henderson, so it was often Scoot Henderson getting a lot of the attention during that pre-draft process. But that doesn't mean that Leonard Miller didn't prove why he was a great prospect. He's only 19 years old, he's got really great feel for the game, and he's got all the physical tools in the world to be successful in the NBA. But by nature of playing next to Scoot Henderson, he was always gonna be the other guy on the G League Ignite team. He did some really impressive stuff with the G League though. He was the second highest scorer for the G League Ignite, clocking 18 points per game. And more impressive is the fact that he was doing it on 64.3% true shooting. We can take it a step further though. He was the only player in the entire G League under the age of 24, recording 18 points per game and 10 rebounds per game on 64% true shooting. He was doing that as a 19 year old power forward. That alone should have been a pretty convincing sales pitch that a team should have taken him in the first round. And in my personal opinion, he should have been a lottery pick. What's really funny though, is the fact that if you've ever watched Leonard Miller play, he's a really bizarre player. First and foremost, he has terrible shooting mechanics. On this shot from this angle, you might not really think much of it. It looks relatively standard, maybe a little bit awkward, but nothing too crazy, right? Well, then you look at this shot and you'll understand. His feet aren't squared. His release is a lot more of a push than it should be. And the weirdest part is that for some reason, he clicks his feet together in the air when he shoots. Despite this, he actually shoots with some pretty remarkable confidence. And at least so far through Summer League, the ball's actually going in the hoop. He's managed to knock down 37.5% of his four three-point attempts per game so far through the Summer League. Obviously, this isn't real NBA basketball just yet, so it's tough to say if the shot's gonna translate to the regular season, but for now, at the very least, it's a promising sign that he might not be hindered by these terrible shooting mechanics. The good news is that regardless of whether he develops a reliable outside shot, there are still plenty of ways that Leonard Miller's gonna be able to contribute on the offensive end from day one. I hinted at it earlier, but Leonard Miller has some really solid feel for the game. And he reads the floor really impressively for a six foot 10 forward. It's not something that we see super often. This creates a lot of awesome passing opportunities when he's attacking closeouts like he does here. See that the help defense is going to step forward to guard him once he attacks. This is going to open up Trevion Williams near the dunker spot, and Miller's going to wrap the pass around his defender to find him for the easy slam. Here's another great example. He moves towards the free throw line with DJ Carton getting trapped, and it leaves Miller without a man. This forces the defense to make a rotation, and for a split second, the Hornets are confused about which of these two defenders are responsible for making that rotation. Since he has plenty of space and the defender's not fully committed to stepping up on him, Miller's gonna go up as if he's gonna shoot the ball, but since the defense had their back turned to the corner, it's gonna open up the baseline cut, and once Miller recognizes that his defender is gonna bite on the shot, he's gonna make the slick pass to the cutter, and he ultimately gets it to fall. This kind of playmaking ability where he's able to leverage his quick decision making to force the defense into some difficult rotations where they have to solve problems on the fly is exactly what you want from more of a supporting type of playmaker and more of a guy who's gonna be doing a lot of their playmaking off the catch rather than off the dribble. Now, all of this isn't to say that Leonard Miller isn't capable of scoring the basketball. As a matter of fact, he's proven that he can score in a variety of different ways. He showcased some really promising post scoring ability during his time with the G League Ignite, shooting a very respectable 48.7% on post-ups, 
There's also been some flashes of a mid-range ability. Although the shooting percentages from mid-range aren't really there yet, there have been enough flashes to make me think that that's an area of his game that could ultimately develop eventually if the shot mechanics get ironed out a little bit. He's also got a little bit of a face-up game, and he's got really good footwork to try and create space, and he doesn't exert a whole lot of energy trying to do it. Even though his form is so weird, his release is quick enough that by the time he gets the shot off, the defender isn't really even able to contest it. This in-between area of his game, as far as mid-range shooting goes, it's more of a swing skill. I don't think it's something he's going to be doing straight out of the gate, more so something that's going to have to be developed and extracted over time. Now, where there is no shortage of talent and efficiency is whenever Miller is getting downhill to score at the rim. This dude is a monster around the rim. He has really really good touch. As a matter of fact, this is one of my favorite parts of Miller's game. While he doesn't have the quickest first step in the world, he does have a pretty solid first step for a six foot ten forward. The fact that he's such a big body, and more importantly, the fact that he's so mobile for his size, allows him to get by his defender in most situations, just strictly due to that size alone. And then once he gets to the rim, even if he's got to run into contact or a tough contest, his touch allows him to oftentimes make those shots. This is even more of an exciting skill when you take into account the fact that Leonard Miller is not scared of contact, which is something that a lot of rookies really struggle with. That's not the case for Leonard Miller at all. Considering he's going to definitely be in an off ball role during his rookie year, I'm excited to see how much damage he's going to be able to do off the catch playing alongside Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Mike Conley, guys that are able to find him and put him in positions to succeed. But there's one area of the game where Leonard Miller is not going to have any problem being impactful from day one, and that's on the defensive end of the floor. He's going to be a perfect complement to Minnesota's defensive personnel playing alongside Rudy Gobert and Jaden McDaniels. I'm really excited about the prospect of Jaden McDaniels and Leonard Miller playing next to each other on the defensive end. And Leonard Miller's defensive capabilities are actually somewhat similar to Jared Vanderbilt, somebody that I know Minnesota fans desperately miss. His defensive instincts allow him to be a really good weak side help defender, and it sets him up to get a good amount of blocks at the rim, or at the very least disrupt their shots. And his athleticism and wingspan allow him to get a hand on shots that other guys might not typically be able to. On top of his interior defensive ability, he's also very switchable despite being 6'10", and this is definitely where he's going to have the most practical applications on the defensive end. And although Miller has all the physical tools in the world to be a great defender, and he already is a very solid defender, his feel for the game really adds to the equation and makes him that much better. Here's a play from Summer League where he's in a situation where he's the lone drop coverage defender. He's ensuring that there's no potential pass to the roll man, but of course with drop coverage, you give up space for the ball handler to shoot if they want to. Fortunately, Miller is long enough and fast enough to still manage to get a hand on the jumper, despite being in drop coverage, and he gets the block. On this play, he's going to trap the ball, trying to force the turnover, but when the ball gets passed back out up top, he immediately knows that there's going to be an open pass to the roller, so he's going to jump the passing lane and grab the steal. The Timberwolves had some inconsistent defense last year, to say the least, so this should be an area of the game where Leonard is going to be able to come in and make an immediate impact. Believe it or not, the selection of Miller actually raises a lot of questions for Minnesota. Assuming he develops the way that myself and a lot of other people think that he's going to develop, then Minnesota starts to look pretty crowded in their front court. He does a lot of the same things that Kyle Anderson does, but Kyle Anderson's on an expiring contract, Leonard Miller's younger, Miller is a better athlete, he's got higher upside, and of course he's far cheaper than extending Kyle Anderson. They also have Nas Reed who just signed that new contract extension, they have Jaden McDaniels who is another major piece for them going forward, and of course Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert are the de facto starters. That's probably more front court depth than they realistically need. Now what this tells me is that the Timberwolves have a little bit of breathing room with these players and if they need to make some moves prior to the trade deadline to reshuffle things a little bit, they're able to do that if they feel like they need to. If they have excess front court depth, they can start thinking about ways that they can get better in other areas on the roster and Leonard Miller might be the piece that allows that to happen. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, all that good stuff. It's the number one way to support me. Help me keep making content. If you want to become a patron, you can click the link below and help support the channel that way. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.